Greetings and salutations, basketball fans. Akil Augustine coming live and direct from my bedroom during this quarantine stay-at-home deal. But today we're going to have a very special guest talk to us about a topic that kind of raged through the NBA, even right now. We're talking about mental health, we're talking about great game preparedness. We're just talking about dealing with life after 2020. So today we have Catherine Taminen, who is actually an associate professor at the University of Toronto in sports psychology. For those who don't know you, talk about yourself um, and how sports plays a role in what you do professionally. So I am an associate professor at U of T and uh, I do research on sport psychology. So I primarily focus on studying stress and coping in sport and looking at how athletes deal with stress and the emotions that they experience. Okay, so let's just jump right into it here. The NBA season right now condensed 72 games. And we've seen an influx in blowout games and team and injuries that, you know, according to the traditional timetables, these injuries are taking longer to recover than expected. Yeah. And so my question to you is, do you see the stressors of what's transpired with the world globally and with this condensed um, schedule? Is, is that the reason why we're seeing discrepancies in, in, a, in our final totals and scores in sports right now? Yeah, it's a good question. And we're certainly, um, you know, watching athletes perform under circumstances that they've never been through before. No one's ever been through before. Um, but we know there's lots of research that shows that when people are under, you know, chronic stress and under situations where they're under, you know, this, this background, this cloud of stress that's around us for this really extended period of time, when that builds up, that can have some really negative effects on um, on our, ourselves mentally, but also physically on the body. It's just exerting a huge toll on the body. And, um, you know, we don't know how well athletes are able to recover between that condensed season between games. So recovery is super important. But um, if athletes are under these situations of chronic stress, you know, training as hard as they can, as they usually would, and, you know, maybe not having sufficient time for recovery, a lot of these things can lead to performance impairments. So just, you know, lapses in attention or, you know, slower to respond and react in games. So a lot of those things can also contribute to those outcomes. All right. Now, given that you are a mental health professional that deals with sports, do you have an open case study or file folder set aside for the Brooklyn Nets this year? Because... I imagine there's a wealth of information and research that you can glean from the experiences of Kevin Durant, his approach to fans, his approach to, and also his injury. Then you've got Kyrie Irving and what he struggled with. From your perspective, is it harder to be an athlete right now? I think what we're seeing now is that um, athletes have multiple ways of talking about their stories and uh, sharing their stories or choosing not to share their stories in ways that we haven't seen before. So I'm not sure if it's that being an athlete these days is necessarily harder than it has been in the past, but perhaps we're just noticing it more or athletes themselves are speaking up about it more. And I think we need to remember that these are people, these are human beings with uh, all of the same concerns and issues and challenges that the rest of us face. Um, there are certainly a lot of challenges that are magnified as, as a professional athlete, but also that we're also seeing a lot more media attention to it. All right, Doc, so what have been the major findings for you in your research on athletes? We know from research with elite athletes like Olympic athletes from Canada and other countries that um, usually the rate or the prevalence of um, symptoms of mental health concerns are, are higher than what might be expected in the general population. Some of the estimates for the rates of um, mental health concerns among elite athletes uh, in Canada and Australia and other countries are around 40 to 50 percent, like it's fairly high. Whereas the general population in Canada, uh, we might see an estimate of mental health concerns uh, around 20 percent. Now, we, I'm not sure how much we can generalize to um, professional athletes, because again, it's hard to do research in those populations. It's hard to get data on professional athletes. But if we're looking at like our top level elite Olympic and Paralympic athletes and they're reporting mental health concerns uh, at, at such a high rate, I think it really does point to the importance of recognizing that these are issues that everyone faces and that they might actually be 
um, magnified in um, elite sport populations. Their bodies and their ability to perform physically are really what they are, you know, relying on to be able to perform. And so I can only imagine what their what stress and kind of concern they must be under when thinking about the potential long term ramifications about potentially contracting COVID. And so despite all that, that they're still out there performing and, and you know, playing. Um, but we have to recognize that athletes are to some extent, putting their lives on the line by by being out there and performing. All right, Doc, we could do this all day, but I don't want to kill yeah, Adam. So many I don't want to yeah. kill Adam because there's so much he has to edit. That was great. Thank you. Well, I'm happy. Anytime you'd like to chat, let me know.